delicious discoveries. My name is Tu Win, nutritionist with Giant. Have you ever cut your apple and left it out for a little bit and saw what happened to it? It'll start to turn brown, right? Well, in today's third Delicious Discoveries class, we are going to explore why this happens and ways to stop it from happening. And fun, we're also going to be making a tasty snack with those apples. Now, if you missed our other Delicious Discoveries classes about freezing point and hydroponics, no worries. Those classes are also recorded, so be sure to check them out. But before we begin, do you have any idea what a nutritionist is? A nutritionist is someone who knows a lot about food and how it keeps us healthy. We also know a little bit about food science too. So not only do we know what foods keep us healthy, we also know why they keep us healthy. And my favorite part of being a nutritionist is being able to meet so many different people, like all of you today. So today we are going to go ahead with our delicious discoveries class. So make sure you grab your adult, grab your materials and your thinking caps, and let's get started. So for today's agenda, we are first going to go through all of our materials to make sure that we have everything that we need for our delicious discovery. Then it's delicious discoveries time. We're going to talk all about enzymes and elements and how they affect our apples. We're also going to talk about how we can stop our apples from browning. And then we are going to make a tasty snack with our apples. Lastly, we are going to test our knowledge and see how much we've learned from our class. So are you ready? But before we begin, let's take a little quiz to see how much we know so far. Now, if you're unsure about the answers, don't be nervous. We are going to take this exact quiz at the end of the class. So just be sure to pay attention. Now, I know I can't hear you in this recorded class, but feel free to just shout out your answers or you can write them down and put them aside. Question number one. When apples turn brown, what type of browning is that? A, enzymatic browning, or B, non-enzymatic browning? Question number two. What's your favorite way to eat an apple? A, fresh as a snack, B, with some cheese, C, baked into a dessert, or D, other? Question number three. What can stop foods from turning brown? A, water, B, tea, C, lemon juice, or D, milk? And question number four. Why are fruits good for our body? A, they have vitamins and minerals. B, they have fiber. C, they have water. Or D, all of the above. So go ahead and put your answers aside. We'll come back to it at the end of the class. Now it's time to see if we have all the materials that we need for our delicious discovery. <laughs> An apple, lemon juice, peanut butter or any other nut butter, a knife, a cutting board, a melon baller or a small cookie cutter, a pastry brush, and optional toppings like coconut flakes, dried fruit, and chocolate chips. Okay, so now that we have all the materials that we need for our delicious discovery, let's go ahead and find out why apples brown when they're cut. And it has to do with something called enzymes. Have you heard of the word enzymes before? Any guesses on what enzymes do? Enzymes are responsible for many things that go on in our bodies, like breaking down and digesting the foods that we eat, helping to build muscles, and absorbing nutrients like vitamins and minerals. 
Not only do our bodies have enzymes, but all living things have enzymes too. So if all living things contain enzymes, including foods, do you think apples have enzymes? Yes, they do. When an apple is cut, the enzyme is exposed to something that causes it to turn brown. Any guesses what that something is? Oxygen, which is in the air that we breathe. The enzyme from the apple reacts with the oxygen in the air and this causes the apple to turn brown. That's why when we first cut an apple, it's not brown yet because the enzyme hasn't reacted with the oxygen in the air. Because our apples turn brown because of this enzyme, this is called enzymatic browning. Did you know that enzymatic browning doesn't only happen in apples? Can you think of other fruits and vegetables where you might have seen it turn brown? Potatoes, bananas, avocados. These all have enzymes too that cause it to turn brown. So these also go through enzymatic browning. So is it safe to eat an apple that has browned? Absolutely. But have you ever opened your lunchbox and your apple slices have turned brown and then suddenly you don't really want to eat it anymore? Well, we can stop apples from browning. How do you think so? Well, we know that apples turn brown because the enzymes react with the oxygen in the air. So if we can stop the enzyme and the oxygen from touching each other or from reacting with each other, we can stop or slow the browning of the apple. What are some ideas that you have that we can stop the oxygen from touching the surface of the apple? First, we can put the fruit in a container or we can wrap it up. But this can sometimes still cause browning because it's really hard to get all of that oxygen out of the container. What's another idea? You can also steam the apple. The high temperatures of steaming the apple actually destroys the enzyme. So when the enzyme is gone, there's nothing to react with the oxygen and then your apple doesn't turn brown. That's why if you're steaming your apple for something like applesauce, it doesn't turn brown like a fresh apple does. But say you don't want to cook your apple. What's another way that we can prevent it from browning? Our environment and elements in our environment, like oxygen, can affect the way that enzymes work. Another element is called the pH or acidity. All foods have a pH level. When a food has a low pH, this means the food is an acid. If a food is an acid, it can sometimes make your face scrunch, or if you get it on a cut, it can really burn. Can you think of an example of a food that's an acid? One popular example is a lemon. Have you ever touched a lemon when you had a cut on your finger? It hurts, right? Can you think of other fruits or vegetables that might be an acid? Citrus fruits are usually acids, so that can include limes and oranges and even tomatoes. Now what about milk? Do you think milk is an acid? No, it's not. When you drink it, it doesn't taste sour, or at least it shouldn't. So why are we even talking about acids? Well, acids can actually stop the enzymes in the apples from working. So if we add an acid to our apple, we can prevent browning. The great news here is that the acid not only stops the browning on apples, but also for those other foods that we mentioned before, like the potatoes, the bananas, and the avocados. So let's go ahead and get to our experiment and see if we can stop the apples from browning. So for today's experiment,
moment, I'm using a Granny Smith apple. What type of apple do you have? There are so many different apples that are out there. Some are sweet, some might be a little sour, some are great for cooking, and some of them are great for snacking. What's your favorite type of apple? Here's a picture of different types of apples, how they taste, and what they're great for. So you can feel free to pause the screen right here and look for your favorite apple, or you can go ahead and take a picture. Did you know that the type of apple that you're using for today's experiment can actually have an effect on how fast it browns? So the Granny Smith apple takes a little bit longer to brown than other apples like a Gala apple or a Red Delicious apple. And this again has to do all about those enzymes. Some apples have more of the enzymes, which will make it brown faster, and other apples have less of the enzymes, which makes it brown slower. Okay, now it's time to get to our experiment. Now keep in mind what I told you before, some apples brown faster than others. So if your apple takes a little bit longer to brown, no worries, just keep on waiting. But let's go ahead and start our experiment. We are gonna start off with our knife. So if you aren't comfortable with the knife, this is where you can get a parent. And remember, we wanna make sure that we wash our hands before we get to our experiment. I already did. So if you haven't washed your hands yet, go ahead and pause the video and go wash your hands. First, slice the top and bottom of the apple. Then slice the apple into half inch circles. You can use a biscuit cutter or a small melon baller to cut a hole in the center of each slice to make it look like a donut. Next, squeeze the lemon juice into a bowl and use a pastry brush to brush the entire apple slice with lemon juice. We're gonna leave one to two apple slices as the control. So we're not gonna put any lemon juice on these slices so we can see if the lemon juice prevents the browning. While we wait and see if the lemon juice is preventing our apples from browning, let's talk a little bit about why apples are such a great snack for us. Do you have any guesses what food group apples belong to? Fruits. Any idea why fruits are good for us? Fruits are full of vitamins and minerals, so they keep us healthy and strong. They also have a lot of fiber, so they're gonna keep us feeling full so that we have energy to play and do our homework. They also have water, so they keep us nice and hydrated. So I have a question for you. Which one do you think is better? Fresh, frozen, or canned fruit? The answer is all of them. All of them are equally good for our bodies. When it comes to fresh fruit, look for local and in season because it's going to have the most vitamins and minerals to keep our bodies nice and strong. So I know that we've been talking about apples this entire class, but my example are with canned peaches, which is fine because peaches are also a fruit. So it's gonna be great for our bodies. So these peaches are in pear juice. This one is in heavy syrup. Which one do you think is a better choice for us? Right, the one in the pear juice. 
This is because the one in the heavy syrup is going to have a lot of added sugar, which we don't want too much in our diets. So another great easy way to see which one is better for our bodies is by looking for guiding stars. So if we're looking at the one in its pear juice, you can see that it receives two guiding stars. The one in the heavy syrup has no guiding stars. So using guiding stars is a great way to tell us which one is a better choice for our bodies. Frozen fruit is also a great option. So I have frozen peaches and you can see that it gets two guiding stars. So again, by looking at those guiding stars, we know that it's a healthy choice for our bodies. Okay, back to our experiment. Now remember what I told you, some apples take a little bit longer to brown than others. So to show you if the lemon juice worked or not, I actually did this experiment before we started the class. So I cut my apple to give it some time to brown. So if your apple didn't brown yet, just be patient, give it some time. So, did the lemon juice work? Yes, it did. This is the one that had lemon juice and this is the one that didn't. The acidity of the lemon juice stopped the enzyme. Congratulations, you did it. You stopped enzymatic browning. So now that we have a bunch of apple slices laying around, let's go ahead and turn them into apple donuts. Are you ready? Let's get started. Using a butter knife or a spoon, spread the peanut butter or the nut butter onto your apple rings. Next, take your toppings and sprinkle it on top. And there you have it. You have your apple donuts. Great job, we made apple donuts. So we know that apples are a great nutritious and healthy snack for us. But did you know that apples and peanut butter or apples and your nut butter make an even better snack? Any guesses why? Apples and peanut butter are a great combination because it's fiber and protein together. When you eat fiber and protein together, you feel fuller longer and it gives you that energy that you need to play and to do your homework. So this apple donut recipe is a great snack to have. And guess what? We are all done. Congratulations. Not only did you learn something new today, you also made a delicious and tasty snack. Do you think you've learned something? Well, it's time for that quiz. So let's pull up those questions from the beginning of the class and see how much you've learned. Question number one. When apples turn brown, what type of browning is that? A, enzymatic browning, or B, non-enzymatic browning? A, enzymatic browning. It turns brown because of enzymes. Question number two. What's your favorite way to eat an apple? A, fresh as a snack, B, with some cheese, C, baked into a dessert, or D, other. Question number three. What can stop foods from turning brown? A, water, B, tea, C, lemon juice, or D, milk? C, lemon juice, great job. And question number four. Why are fruits good for our body? A, they have vitamins and minerals. B, they have fiber. C, they have water. Or D, all of the above. D, all of the above. Parents and teachers, if you've enjoyed this activity for your kids, make sure you stay tuned for more upcoming Delicious Discoveries classes. Our next one is going to be all about why bread rises. But before we go, I would love to see how you and your kids had fun with this class. 
So the first 10 people to post to our Healthy Living by Giant Facebook group will receive a delicious Discoveries apron mailed straight to your house. So whether it's a picture of your apple donuts or a video of you preventing apples from browning, I would love to see it. You can join our Facebook group by scanning the QR code right here. Thank you so much for joining our class today. For more information or to register for more upcoming Delicious Discoveries classes, be sure to check out giantfood.com slash nutrition. Bye!